Hello, I'm uh, Andrew Hanlon, Senior Economist at uh, Westpac. Uh, so in the week beginning uh, March the 21st, uh, the main focus domestically will be on house price update and also the, a speech given by uh, Reserve Bank Governor Glenn Stevens. Uh, the house price measure is from the Australian Bureau of Statistics. Uh, unfortunately, it's a very dated measure. It relates to December quarter 2015. Uh, we expect that to show a decline of around half a percent and that annual growth is moderated from around 10 to 8 percent. But of course, we already have information for the March quarter and it shows that house prices have moved forward again, up maybe around 2 percent. For the Reserve Bank, they would certainly welcome some cooling of house prices They'd work with a regulator to try and take some heat out of the housing market, tighten lending standards for investors. So they'd be quite comfortable with the fact that house price momentum has slowed from what it was about a year ago. The Reserve Bank Governor is speaking on the Tuesday at the ASIC uh, Annual Forum. Uh, the topic is around can Australia's financial system withstand a major global shock. So I think it'll be more big picture rather than focused on the domestic policy debate. In the week that was, the main focus for markets was the US Federal Reserve, the Australian dollar and also the Australian jobs data. The US Federal Reserve took a very balanced approach. Markets had priced out any expectations of further rate hikes by the US Federal Reserve in 2016. We always viewed that as being too extreme. The Federal Reserve is committed to lifting interest rates from zero and they will continue along that path. They indicated a commitment to that at the recent uh, statement. They've, they have paired back expectations from four hikes for 2016 back to two. Domestically, things are fairly robust, but of course there are global fragilities and the high US dollar. As a result of those two factors, they now see net exports as being soft and business investment as being soft as well. That has seen them downgrade their growth forecast a little bit, contributing to that more gradual path for interest rates, but certainly rates are expected to move higher in 2016. The Aussie dollar has certainly moved upwards. Um, we've seen the Aussie dollar move up to 76 US cents, breaking out of its range of 70 to 72. Uh, so what does that mean for the Reserve Bank? Some, of course, are speculating that it could mean it will force the Reserve Bank's hand to lower interest rates in response to currency strength. Keep in mind, though, the currency has strengthened alongside an increase in commodity prices. The iron ore price was trading sub $40 around the turn of the year, it's now at 56. We think that, that strength in commodity prices for iron ore in particular is uh, unlikely to be sustained. Iron ore prices uh, will reflect the incredible supply that's out there and will start to move lower and that will place some downward pressure on the currency which we expect to move back to that sort of 70 to 72 cent range later this year. Turning to the Australian jobs data, certainly a keen focus for the Reserve Bank. They've highlighted the strength of the labour market and was certainly evident in 2015. But we in the Reserve Bank always thought the jobs data looked a little too strong. What we have seen in the past three months is a, a stalling of employment. I don't think the Reserve Bank would too, be too concerned by that. They'd see that as a consolidation. Annual jobs growth has slowed now from a peak of 2.9 to 2.1. There's still well in excess of population growth, which is one and a half. The unemployment rate has moved lower from 6.2% to 5.8%, so indicating a strengthening of the labour market, a tightening of the labour market. I think the Reserve Bank would welcome that and see that as evidence that the economy is rebalancing. So all in all, certainly for the Reserve Bank, a lot to consider, but at this stage we continue to expect them to be on hold. Thank you.